MovieWeb.com. The first thing I want to know is when you're writing a movie like this, are you visualizing in your head the CG or is, do you see it like in human form? Or? You know, in the case of this movie, uh, um, I originally wrote it for myself to direct. And, uh, you know, I. And, and when I first had been exposed to the material, which was like 1981, high school, you know, freshman English, um, this kind of CG just simply didn't exist. It just wasn't possible. And even when Neil and I um, got together in like 1994 to, uh, to write this, and which was a, it was a spec script, um, you know, we got together and uh, it was with the intention of, uh, I was originally going to direct it, and um, we went off, and even then, CG in this kind of form simply wasn't possible. So, cut to a number of years later, um, Robert you know, takes on the project, and he's like, he calls me up, and he says, I want to make this as, uh, you know, as my next performance capture movie. And it's like, fantastic. It was, it was, it's joyous to me because it's, it's a dream fulfillment. Of, it's like somebody was able to reach into my dreams and pull out the wildest vision of what Beowulf could be that it was better than I ever imagined it could be. Do you consider yourself a daydreamer? I mean, do you spend a lot of time daydreaming before you even you know, get to the writing stage? Uh, you know, I only became a writer out of necessity because it's cheaper and easier than hiring somebody else to do it for you. And um, you know when when Quentin and I first started writing, it was that was it was just a function of got to have a blueprint if you're going to make a movie. And so what I would do is I would just you know I would just watch the movie in my head and I would just try to listen to the characters as they were talking and just try to keep up with what I was hearing. And um, and so yeah, I usually and I tend to when I work on a script, I tend to write it in such a way that I try to present to the reader as close a visual approximation um, as possible to you know, what I'm seeing in my head. And what that means is, you know, I could describe you and I sitting here talking, and I could begin on my face or, you know, on the microphone and, or on the camera, and then back up and show the room, or I could show the room and then back up on the camera, and it has a different psychological impact. And so when you write something, you, in some ways, you are guiding visually what you're going to show. However, when, um, when Bob came to us and he said, I want to do this as performance capture, he said, guys, I love the script. It's perfect. However, whatever you always wanted to do that you never thought was possible, now you can do. Because it's going to cost the same, whether you know, it's a guy standing in an empty, you know, sitting in a chair, or whether you know, we have a dragon destroying the kingdom. It's all the same, you know, once, uh, because it's all, it's all pixels. <laughs> it's all ones and zeros. And so, you know, we can do anything. Go to town. And Neil and I went away and I was like, God, that's like usually the opposite of what people are telling us. Usually it's like, tone it down, tone it down. You know, he did the opposite. He said, go to the moon with it. And so we tried to, tried to live up to his expectations. Well, how has the anticipation been for you for this project being around for so long? To, well, considering, to that, it? considering that it's like a 20-year journey for me, uh, the anticipation is huge. It's uh, it's like the longest foreplay I've uh, you know, imaginable, and so the payload is going to be equally. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I, uh, that's off. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, the you know the anticipation is great, more so because I haven't seen the finished film because we're you know they say like oh it's going to be a wet print when it goes into theaters. Well, in this case, man, they're going to be rendering right up to the last second, and um, what I've seen thus far is. It uh, looked like a PlayStation 1 video game because it was an early rough version of uh, you know, pre-rendering of all the fine shading and you know, smoothing of polygons and whatever it is that they do. Um, and yet what I was watching so engaged me and was so true to everything that I had ever hoped that this could be, I cried while watching it. It really moved me. And I didn't cry because it was, you know, it, it was what I always wanted it to be. It was, I cried because I... I left behind the 20 years of development and I just found myself in the movie watching it. And it was, you know, it's, it was the best possible scenario for me. Okay, great. Great. Well, thank you. Thank you. So thank you. It's an absolute